that was fighting for gay rights mm -hmm. and people were killed. Nobody they were was killed at Stonewall. Nobody was Nobody killed. Was when Venus was just 15 years old, she told her mother that when she grew up, she was going to be Madonna. And that's exactly what she did. Or at least, she became the next best thing, which was a professional Madonna impersonator. Venus Delight has faced many challenges while navigating the world of Drag Race. Yet, who could blame her? It's not easy being the first eliminated queen of any season to remain in the audience's mind long enough to build a strong following. However, despite the obstacles, Venus' name is somewhat recognizable to fans, even if most of them don't fully know who she is. So, in this video, let's explore the chaotic world of Venus Delight and try to find more depth into a character who we really didn't get to see much on the show. But before we start, please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and follow me on Twitter at GreenGayYT for updates on future videos. Now, let's begin. Venus Delight grew up idolizing Madonna. To her, Madonna was a symbol of confidence who always pushed boundaries, and exuded what it meant to allow one's creativity to run free. Inspired by Madonna, Venus began exploring feminine clothing, with her first time being out in drag happening in the year 2002, where she performed as Madonna at a local club. Something that would gradually pave her the way to become part of drag history. Throughout her time living in Los Angeles, she actually built a semi-decent reputation in the drag scene, even becoming part of the Dream Girls, working often with queens like Delta Work or Chad Michaels. So then, where do we go from here? When we look at the first five original first outs of RuPaul's Drag Race, most of them would have a really difficult time making anything sustainable out of their time competing. I mean, of course we have exceptions like Shangela, but even then it doesn't really count since she was brought back for season three and would last almost the whole season. And arguably Porkchop benefits from having the title of the first ever eliminated queen from the franchise, something that kind of helps her name stay relevant among newer fans. But queens like Alyssa Summers, Penetration, or even Venus Delight do sometimes feel like the sort of forgotten queens of the franchise. I mean, there's barely any information available about them. And it's hard to keep up sometimes with what their drag journey has been like in recent years. But the most challenging part about why they weren't so memorable is because we really never got to learn anything sustainable about them in the one episode they competed in. So then, what was Venus's journey being the third queen to ever be eliminated first on RuPaul's Drag Race? Season 3 was filmed in the summer of 2010, and would later air in early 2011. The first episode of the season was actually a filler episode titled Casting Extravaganza, centered on the audition process that queens have to go through in order to get on the show. We see some cameos from future alumni that would later on be cast throughout the next decade, but towards the end of the episode, they held live auditions from queens that they had called in. Yet according to Race Chaser, Venus Delight and Delta Work already knew that they had been cast on the show before they filmed this audition, and actually ran into each other in the parking lot of the set. They mostly just showed up to the live audition on the off chance that if they said no, production would just replace them with someone else. Which does make me wonder if the other queens that they had called in for the live audition knew that they had no chance of getting on the season. Also wait, is that Detox? <laughs> They also had Rayla Trey, who's Willem's drag sister. Anyways, this means that by the time Rue announces to Venus that she's been officially chosen to be cast on season 3, Venus got to display her acting chops by pretending she didn't already know that information. On season 3, episode 2, we got the first actual competitive episode of the season. Venus entered wearing one of the outfits that she had worn in her audition tape, which we'll talk about in just a second. It's on this episode that Shangela was revealed as the first ever returning queen of the franchise. This was something that during the episode, would end up being a point of contention, with Queens asking Shangela how she even got to be able to compete again. I did always find it weird that Shangela's response was that she auditioned for season 3 just like everybody else, and that's how she got cast when really it seemed pretty clear that production had asked her back, but regardless, Venus didn't really do well on that episode. The Christmas-themed mini-challenge, which consisted of a photo shoot, didn't result in the best picture. But then again, that's always been a questionable challenge, since we know that each queen takes multiple photos, but somehow they choose the worst one for some of the contestants. But aside from that, the main challenge was a Christmas-themed sewing-slash-design challenge. Venus's outfit actually wasn't all that bad looking back at it, especially when you think of all the other designs that we would see in the years to come. Unfortunately, once Shangela and Venus were placed in the bottom two, we got a lip sync that could only best be described as chaos. Outfits were falling apart, items were being thrown at queens, and things got a little physical, with queens in the background cowering in fear at the objects that were being thrown around. Which, by the way, the reason Venus threw her ponytail during the lip sync was because she was originally aiming for the ceiling, but it misfired and almost hit some of the safe queens. But that in a way, she's happy that it almost hit Raja, who according to her, was able to skip the audition process for season 3. Venus also says that producers went to Raja's house two weeks before filming began, which is 
why Raja only brought two duffel bags to season 3. Yet after the war battle between Venus and Shangela was over, and a production member went on stage to take out all the broken pieces of glass that had gotten stuck to Shangela's back, RuPaul announced that Shangela had won the lip sync and Venus Delight would be the first queen eliminated from the season. It's really tough to go home first. I can't imagine how humiliating it feels even for those who competed in the first few seasons. But nevertheless, that's part of the game, and as Yara says, somebody has to go home first. So then, what happens next? The next time we'd see Venus would be in the Season 3 reunion, where she featured another one of her Madonna looks. She also revealed that her Snatch Game character would have been Madonna, and that while it was hard being the first queen eliminated, she did inevitably get over it. As time went on, Venus ended up cementing herself as the number one Madonna impersonator. Being a celebrity impersonator, if you're good at it, can help you stand out from the crowd and earn you some good bookings. But it didn't seem to pay off too well for her by trying to capitalize on being a Madonna impersonator when she competed on season 3. In contrast, Chad Michaels would go on to show how you can in fact be a known celebrity impersonator and succeed under the format of the show. Chad using Cher as a base for his brand even earned him the opportunity to meet Cher in person many times. But when it comes to Venus, despite her earning a lot of praise for being a Madonna impersonator and getting critical acclaim for it, she never really got a big notice from Madonna personally. Instead, Madonna has actually invited Derek Barry, who's a Britney Spears impersonator, on stage for one of her shows. And even other Rue girls like Milk have indirectly gotten approval by Madonna's team when she got the role to be in a Madonna commercial. And even when Madonna's team is looking for queens to be a part of their projects, it doesn't seem like they have any interest in working with Venus. Which in a way is sort of sad. But that's show business, I guess. Many years after season 3, Venus randomly revealed in a Hey Queen interview that she credits herself with a sugar daddy speech that was made by Shangela in Untucked, because she was the one that told Mimi on first that Shangela had a sugar daddy while they were filming the promo for season 3, which happened a day after her own elimination. The interview was sort of awkward because you can see Johnny McGovern visibly weirded out or at least trying to figure out what exactly is the point that's trying to be made. According to Venus, she had a best friend that was hanging out with Shangela often before the filming of season 2 and 3, stating that during the filming of the promo, Mimi on first and some of the other queens got together to gossip about Shangela, because they felt that she was getting the star treatment from production. She also mentions how throughout the season, you'll hear some of the queens say the phrase, the jig is up, which to them was a direct comment on the production of the show, because many of them felt that things didn't seem entirely fair in terms of the politics of the show. We also know that after the filming of this episode, production for the show would be postponed for a couple weeks. You can really tell because some Suddenly, Mariah Paris Balenciaga has a beard in her confessionals the very next episode. And coincidentally, the first episode they filmed after the pause was the one where Mimi ends up getting eliminated. As for the reason in the pause in filming, there's never been an official answer. According to Venus, depending on who you believe, it's either because Rue got sick or because Shangela allegedly physically assaulted Mimi and they needed to hammer things up with the legal team. But regardless of what the truth was, it was sort of funny that all those years later, Venus would come out of the woodwork to reveal that she was the mastermind behind the Untucked fight. Now, despite not leaving the biggest mark on Drag Race, Venus was still an active part within her local drag scene. She was actually part of the Dream Girls for many years and was pretty booked and blessed. It's within the Dream Girls that she built a good working relationship with queens like Chad Michaels and Delta Work. Some of her fondest memories with them is how grateful she was for their acceptance into their show, and the many lessons she learned from them. A night she will never forget was when she was late to a show and only had 30 minutes to put on her makeup. Yet after she performed Vogue by Madonna in front of the club, she got a standing ovation from the audience. Something that meant a lot to her because it didn't really happen very often. Unfortunately, Venus would end up leaving the Dream Girls in 2013 to run away to New York City so that she could escape from what had been a two-year addiction to meth. So leaving California was a way for her to try to find herself again, and she needed that change in environment. But despite abruptly leaving, she never told Chad or any of the other queens she was working with the real reason behind why she left their shows. She was mostly afraid that people would spread gossip about her. However, it seems that her departure wasn't on the best of terms, because after working as part of the Dream Girls for over six years, she was never asked by them to come back, or was ever mentioned, something that they've never given Venus a reason why. This would end up causing Venus to go into a deep depression, and had to talk to a therapist about it. Venus did reach out to Chad years later, but Chad told Venus that there was just no room for her in the show anymore. 
But even though things with the dream girls didn't end in the best of ways, she's still grateful for the memories she had there. What I will say about Venus is that she did hustle a lot and earned herself some small gigs on TV throughout the past decade. In 2015, Venus appeared on an episode of Skin Wars. Skin Wars was a reality TV competition about body painters that had different challenges and models each episode that they would have to paint over. For one of the episodes on season 2, they brought back a bunch of queens from RuPaul's Drag Race and assigned them to each of the contestants. The theme for the episode was red carpet music icons. So the body painters had to create a look of an artist that was assigned to each queen. This included Yara Sofia as Shakira, Mariah Valenciaga as Janet Jackson, Vivian Pinay as Nicki Minaj, Alyssa Edwards as Katy Perry, Tammy Brown as Tina Turner, Jessica Wilde as Beyonce, Detox as Cyndi Lauper, Laganja Estraja as Lady Gaga, and of course, Venus Delight as Madonna. Venus got paired with a girl named Lana, who decided that she wanted to incorporate every single era of Madonna into one look. This resulted in Venus's look being considered one of the worst from the entire episode, and Venus's partner landed in the bottom two and was almost eliminated. The one who went home was the person who was supposed to turn Mariah into Janet Jackson. Another show Venus appeared on was Botched, a show that centered around fixing people's faces through plastic surgery, an experience that Venus looks back on very fondly. But probably one of the more iconic appearances was when she was on My Strange Addiction for being addicted to being Madonna. In it, she talks about how her obsession inevitably resulted in her sometimes thinking that she was really Madonna. But like, by the end of the episode, something is revealed that I can only assume was a lie. Because apparently, Venus ended up rejecting all things Madonna, sold all her outfits, and moved in with her boyfriend to start a new life. But like, she continued to dress up as Madonna for years to come, so I guess they just wanted to make the episode more dramatic. One of the big reasons why Venus began to gain a lot of notoriety as a Madonna impersonator was because of the sheer amount of investing and life-changing procedures that she had been doing with plastic surgery in order to get a facial structure to resemble Madonna as much as possible. According to Venus, her plastic surgery has created conflict with some of her close personal relationships, such as her mother who hates Madonna. And sometimes people she's dated have told her that she may be going overboard with how much work she gets done to her face. Even between the filming of her elimination and the reunion episode for season 3, she had already gotten multiple procedures done to herself. Yet then again, it's her life and she should be able to do whatever she wants. But sometimes the things that she wants to do doesn't always give her the public feedback she may have wanted. While I was looking into all things Venus for the making of this video, I came across what years ago was a sort of joke to many fans, which was the music video she collaborated on titled The Plastics, which was basically an advertisement to get people to do plastic surgery. Are you one of the boring people? Who don't want to be beautiful? Because everyone can be beautiful when, when you're, you're made, made of plastic. plastic. This is probably one of the most bizarre music videos I have ever encountered regarding a drag race queen. The lyrics of the song is about having plastic surgery and how it can make your life better. The three performers in this video are of course Venus Delight, but also Toby Sheldon that spent over $100,000 to look like Justin Bieber, and Kitty J who spent thousands of dollars to look like Jennifer Lawrence. The comments for this video are disabled, as it seems that having a message that if you're unhappy, you should spend thousands of dollars on plastic surgery to fix it wasn't what the public wanted to hear. Yet to make things even darker, Toby Sheldon, who had gained notoriety from the money he spent to look like Justin Bieber, would end up dying from a drug overdose less than a year after this video was released. Moving on, over the years, we get a lot of different beefs that happen between queens, but some of them are just so random, one of which was the feud between Bianca Del Rio and Venus Delight. It all started when Bianca had been doing her WoW Presents series where she reacted to the drag race journeys of one of the queens and gave some of her commentary on it. One of these videos was about Venus Delight, where Bianca poked fun at Venus in the same way she had been doing with all the other queens. But Venus responded to the video with a post on social media that seemed to be shading Bianca. After this, Venus ended up being contacted by World of Wonder to come in and film herself reacting to Bianca's episode. It's here where Venus ended up trying to read Bianca, and naturally most fans would end up siding with Bianca since it just felt so random. But according to Venus, she was never mad at her in the first place for the video, and that her posting some shade on social media was just to create a fun little cat fight. 
that inadvertently resulted in her reaction through World of Wonder. She does, however, regret filming the video due to the negative reaction she got from fans. Bianca had also apparently posted a video of Venus's escorting ads on social media in an attempt to read Venus, which Venus personally takes issue with since those were very hard times for her, saying, quote, I was starving and broke, and it's not the time in my life that I was most proud about. But she did feel that Bianca was calling her out on her private business. And also, Loki thinks that Bianca is the reason why the fandom is so toxic. But speaking of fans, in 2018, Venus got into what is now considered to be some very infamous drama, which is the Ripley's Believe It or Not fiasco. The story goes that after helping out a fan that had expressed online that they were feeling suicidal, Venus sent him a message that asked if they'd be willing to share a story on the RuPaul's Drag Race fan group site about how Venus had reached out to him after he had posted that he was going to take his own life, and that Venus helped him feel better and optimistic. In return for this favor, she'd sent him an autographed copy of the latest hardcover edition of Ripley's Believe It or Not, featuring none other than Queen Venus herself. But the fan felt sort of offended by Venus trying to gain clout for helping him, so he posted the whole interaction online calling her out. Afterwards, Venus responded saying that she couldn't believe that this person would expose her like that, feeling that their anger wasn't justified when all she was trying to do was help him, and just wanted him to share the story with the public. But the Ripley's Believe It or Not era would also bring even more opportunities for Venus, because that same year, a random Spanish-speaking news channel invited Venus to do a makeover on one of their male hosts. The task was that they would use a photo of Angelina Jolie as reference for the makeover. Venus actually convinced this person that he truly did look like Angelina Jolie's clone. Wow. So, Angelina. so then, when it comes to the person that is Venus Delight, what should we come out of it thinking? Looking into the world of Venus, it's easy to get lost in the layers that come with the more you get to know about her. But when it really comes down to it, this is a person that prior to Drag Race was able to make a decent name for herself within the drag community she was living in. And it seems that what really got in the way of her success was largely being the queen that Faith would result in her going home first. Even while making this video, I still don't have a clear picture of who the person behind Venus Delight is. But with the way we have like 5 seasons of All Stars a year, we might be getting her back sooner than you think. Plus, Venus has said that if she returns to compete on All Stars, she already has some material that producers can work with to give her a sustainable storyline. In a way, it's intriguing to see what her creative expression might look like too, or what she might bring to a talent show performance. Because within her time in Dreamgirls, one of her favorite performances that she's ever done is when she did The Blob, where she paid reference to the movie The Blob, centered around a blob that just keeps growing and eating everyone it finds. It was a movie from 1956 that Venus's mom thought was the scariest movie she had ever seen. Venus starts the performance as the blob until revealing into herself. Now, I'm not sure what the requirements for the original seasons of Drag Race audition tapes were, but Venus's audition is a super creative video that she put together. It was centered around her auditioning for season 2 but not getting on it. And the sketch revolves around a character that slowly goes mad from how bad they want to compete on RuPaul's Drag Race. Yet Venus's creativity has also reflected reflected in other aspects of her career. Venus has also accused the production of World of Wonder of being inspired by her season 3 audition tape, by inadvertently giving them ideas for their challenges. The biggest one was the sci-fi trailer challenge that she feels was ripped off of her bimbos in outer space clip. Then you don't want to miss Disco Bimbos from Outer Space, starring Venus Delight. But who knows, maybe this was just a coincidence. But it is kind of funny to think of World of Wonder making an entire challenge out of a clip from Venus's audition tape, only to not even let her participate in it. In recent years, Venus has had a more controversial online presence. In July 2022, Venus made a post on Instagram accusing a fan favorite queen from the franchise of sexually assaulting her back in the year 2013. She didn't want to name any names as to which queen she was talking about, mostly because of how unpredictable the fan base can be, but the caption of the post was also, quote, the rapture takes a darker turn, which was sort of a really weird relations reference to make. The end of the statement gives the phone number for the National SA hotline, 
A couple days after that, Venus posted a picture on Instagram of her being hospitalized due to having a seizure. So it seems that she might have been going through some really rough times. So hopefully things are getting better now. At the end of the day, I'm not sure what it is about Venus the Light, but she has a presence that is really unique to her. I mean, sure, she was the first out of her season, but she's also a person who, just like the rest of the contestants on the franchise, was just trying to achieve their dreams and got dealt a rough go during their run on the show. I want to take a moment to thank my patrons. In the Elite Pink Squad, we have Matthew Burns, Gay Uncle, Wendell Norris Realtor, Tyler Hendricks MD, Poppers Alberta, and Sari Tish. In the Gay Squad, we have Ethan Von Queer and Emma Malander. And in the Green Squad, we have Azure, Cayman Rider Furry, Franny Fishsticks, Edgar Allan Pup, O Nicole, The Only Sean, and LP. If you'd like to see your name on the screen, you can support me on Patreon. The link will be in the description. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment below what you thought about this video. Follow me on Twitter at GreenGateYT for updates on future content, and I'll see you guys next time.